So especially when we're using these contemporary style uh, railings that are basically dimensions of a 2x4, we don't just cut them off on the stair angle or cut them off square and leave them because it just doesn't look professional. What we do is we do mitered ends, return them to the wall uh, at top and bottom, and then we'll make a miter at the top of the staircase so that you have a piece of horizontal railing for a grip before you take your first step off the uh, down the staircase. Um, what we're going to do is make up the miters in the shop. We're going to use a domino on the return miters and we're going to use a domino and a lamello invis on the uh, miter at the top of the staircase where it goes to the horizontal piece of railing. And uh, it's a way more professional uh, way to build a railing and you set yourself apart from other builders, I think, by doing it this way. And then once you get it all, um, all the joinery done, then you can stain and, uh, and varnish and, and, and install it. And I'll show you how to install it too so that it's, you know, relatively trouble free. So off camera, I've drawn a little uh, drawing of the railing so I know what it looks like. And of course, I've made my measurements at the job site. But I've written down notes here on exactly what pieces I need to do this uh, railing. And the reason it's important to do this is because I'm going to cut, uh, for example, a 12 inch piece of railing that's going to have a, uh, an angle 19 and a, and a half degrees at one end and then a miter at the other end. And that's this piece here. Then I'm going to do a 47 inch piece of railing next. And then after that, I'm going to cut my little mitered ends out of this remaining uh, piece here. I need four of them all together. And what they're going to look like is this piece right here. And we can uh, hot glue this onto a piece of melamine to put a domino uh, opening or hole in this, but it's a little easier to do with a long piece. So that's what we're going to do is when we get down to this end and we're going to cut our four mitered ends, we're going to make a cut, then do a domino hole, make another cut, and another domino hole, and so on. And uh, that's uh, how that this system is going to work out with, you know, the least amount of headaches and the most efficient. So here you can see how we use a framing square and a wall bracket to determine the length of the miter. This top angle where the stair railing meets the horizontal piece of railing on the top of the uh, staircase is simply the stair angle, which is 38.75 divided by 2. If you want more information on determining stair angles, just check out my video on stair math, Something and I'll like put a link here for that. Right, so I'm going to domino the uh, miters here. I'm going to mark this A. So I need two left miters altogether and two right miters. This is the miter. Re this is going to be the miter return. It's going to be roughly three and a half inches back from the point. So I'm marking these so that uh, I make sure that I put the domino uh, hole in in the right spot on these returns. Right, so. What I'm doing is I'm using these uh, detents here, I suppose they're called. So I'm making sure that when I do my domino hole, I've got one of these at the bottom of the rail. So each one will be opposite the other sort of thing. Uh, the miter will be one, done one way and the main piece of railing will be done on the other side. So as long as I keep these detents to the bottom of the railing, groove is near the top, these things will will fit. So we're going to make sure we have it on the small setting for the domino. I want a tight fit. I've got 15 for the depth from my fence to the center of the domino hole. And then because I'm using a 50 millimeter domino, I have the domino machine set at 25 for depth on each side.
So what I've done here is I've done a, a dry fit before I cut my miter off at the three and a half inch mark. Uh, made sure that it's going to fit. <clears throat> sometimes there's a tendency, especially with the uh, fence at 45 degrees, sometimes you can be off a little bit if you're not careful. But that worked out good. Okay, so uh, Alden's going to do this glue up using a pair of uh, underwear that uh, a little bit of mileage on him. <laughs> so for these railing connections I'm using an 8 by 50 domino. So you can definitely use a domino 500 if you don't own a 700 like I do. Uh, that'll do the job just fine. If you're finding this uh, video informative, this would be a good time to subscribe to my channel. Subscribing doesn't cost you anything. There's no downside of subscribing to a channel, and it does help the creator very much. Thanks for subscribing if you uh, have done that already. Thank you. So now that we have the four foot piece of railing done with the miters, we're going to tackle the uh, longer piece of railing uh, with the lamello invis uh, joint in it. And it's going to be pretty much 14 feet long altogether with uh, three miters in it. Now if you've never seen a lamello invis in action, uh, you're going to be amazed at this technology. It's basically magnetic uh, joinery. And uh, if you want to check out uh, further details on the Lamello Invis, I have two different videos featuring this uh, tool. One is specific to the basics of operating or doing a Lamello Invis joint, and I'll put a link to that video here as well. If you do a lot of railing connections like this, the Lamello Invis is definitely a good purchase. Uh, at the time of this video, it's about $750 for the kit. And uh, if you've ever tried to connect two long pieces of railing, uh, it's very difficult to clamp them and hold them, uh, you know, secure while the glue sets. So for me, this tool is a good addition to have. So here I'm inserting the longer magnetic uh, portion of the lamello connector into one side of the railing. And then the other side is the shorter uh, non-magnetic uh, receiver part of the connector. You can also buy larger connectors for uses like uh, new post to railing connections. Uh, here I'm just doing a dry fit to make sure everything's going to go together nicely. Just make sure you don't hammer that connection down too hard with that magnetic uh, joiner. And it'll easily come apart uh, to, uh, you know, prepare for the glue up. So what I want to show you is this is why I like to join these railings prior to them being stained because these are two different pieces of railing from the same supplier. But this is fairly smooth here. Um, really nice joint with the lamello invis and the domino. 
When I flip that over, you can see that this piece of railing here is at least a 30 second thicker than this railing here, this piece of railing here. So that's why I like to join them, do all my joinery while they're still raw, and then sand them up and stain them after. So there we have it, we've got two railings uh, completely glued up. We'll let them uh, sit overnight before we sand and stain. Probably going to do about three, maybe four coats of stain and then uh, put these up using little wall brackets uh, like that one there. So here I've got the railing laying on the nosings of the stair. I'm just going to walk up here. This is uh, how we know that we use the right angle and calculation on the top because that uh, horizontal piece of railing that's a foot long is just sitting nicely on the second floor hallway. And this, the, the railing is sitting perfectly on the nosings of the stairs. So <clears throat> because this angle here straight up and out. If there was a newel post here, for example, this angle cut would be 38.75. And we know that from when we put the post in and the railing on the other side of the stairs. So we just divided 38.75 in half. So what we're going to do, we're going to fasten this onto the brackets so that this seam is roughly in line with this point on the top nosing. So I'm going to show you what I found to be the easiest way of setting uh, wall brackets on the wall. So what I've done here is I've laid the railing on the stair nosings and if you can see here that's roughly sitting on the seven inch mark on the framing square and if you can't see it you have to take my word for it and if we go up, looking in the framing square, it's about 14 and a half to the middle of the hole thereabouts. So seven and a half inches down from the top of the railing will be the, the right place to put the brackets. So up here on the wall, I've marked my first stud. I've got it marked. That would be the top of the finished railing, that X there. And then seven and a half inches down, I've got a mark here, and this is on a stud. That's seven and a half inches down. So that is where I'll put the center of the bracket. So make a long story short, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a bracket at the bottom of the stairs and then set a bracket at the top, set the railing on and put all my intermediate brackets in between so they're touching the railing. That is the simplest way. I've tried chalk line, I've tried chalk line with talcum powder in it, uh, so on and so forth. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the framing square 
and measure the distance is 21 and a quarter to the center of where that bracket's going to go, where that screw is going to go. So that's what I'll do to mark my next one. So it'll be this edge of the framing square on both to keep it consistent. So I've marked the middle of a stud very close to the top of the staircase here. Now I'm just going to put my framing square on the stringer and you can see here how this uh, carpet is pretty much, the nosing is pretty much flush with the top of the stringer so we can use that uh, as a guide. If, if in your case it's not, you, you'll have to figure something else out. You maybe use a level uh, up from the nosing. So I'm going to mark it at 21 and a quarter. And those two brackets should be uh, identical up from the uh, rake of the stairs. Yes, yeah, so for these uh, brackets I use, and I assume they're pretty much consistent in North America, but what I use is a 3 16 bit to pre-drill the hardwood uh, for the screws. And then I use a large size uh, Phillips bit for the uh, driving the screws. And uh, one of the things, yeah, you don't have to pre-drill into your stud and your drywall, of course. But if you don't pre-drill that uh, oak or maple railing um, with a big enough uh, drill hole, uh, 3 16 in this case, there's a good chance you'll snap it off. And I've done that in the past. So that's why I know. <laughs> So the railing's got a bit of a twist to it. Uh, you probably can't see it, but so Alden's going to twist this railing while I get a screw or two into uh, this bottom bracket. So as you can tell, uh, this set of stairs here with this black and white rug it's perfect camouflage for a black screw so after looking for our screws I, I put this uh, power mag on here from fast cap and it's a good little product to hold your screws while you're doing work like this uh, on your knees and so on and it's handy to keep your screws just where you need them Well, I hope you liked this video and it gave you an idea of how to do a bitered handrail if, if you haven't done them already. Uh, please uh, leave a comment and whether it's a question or a suggestion, anything at all, that helps the channel. And so does subscribing. So if you haven't subscribed and you like the content, uh, please do that. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Take care.